Hello to you. In recent months, I've had a number of people contact me and ask, is there an easy way to make text flow along a circular path in Scan and Cut or Scan and Cut Canvas or Canvas Workspace? Um, now, unfortunately, the answer is no, there is no automatic way, but there is a fairly, you know, easy and, um, what's the word? Let's just go with easy. There is a fairly easy way to do this in Canvas Workspace, so that's what I plan to show you today. Uh, I've obviously logged into Canvas Workspace, that's the online version of this, and I'm working in this because um, I actually prefer it at the moment. It has a few more things that I can use. So I'm going to first of all drag on a circle, that's our basic starting point. Then I'm going to go to the text section and pick one of the fonts that I can work with. Mm, let's see, I will go with, these are the choices aren't they? I think I'll go with this one for now, Brussels Demi. So I just click on that and it drops me in a text box. I can get rid of that now because I don't need it anymore. Double click on the text to edit and then I will type in the message that I want to go around the um, circle. Okay, so I've typed the text, click on the select tool or press V on your keyboard. Oh, no, don't press key on V on your keyboard. Just press on the select button, that's this little arrow up here. We've now got a text and we've now got our circle. Now I'm not sure this text is going to fit around this circle at the moment, so I'm just going to increase that in size a bit and we'll see how we get on. Now with my text selected, I'm going to go up to the edit menu and down to the process overlap section and choose divide. This is going to split all of that um, sentiment up into individual characters as you can see here I'm selecting each one. And then what I'm going to do is start with the first letter and I'll move it to just above the circle and I'm going to view, use the view menu to zoom right into that H. Maybe a bit too far, I'll go out a little bit more. Now basically what I'm going to do is use this baseline of the bounding box, that's the blue dash line to be my guide as to whether I've got it right or not. And I'm going to try and every time I move a letter, I'm going to try and make sure those two blue dots in the corner are hitting that line of that circle. So that's my H done, but I just want to make sure that it's right in the center. So I'm going to select both the H and the circle, go to my edit menu, and then from the align, I'm going to choose center. And that's now right in the middle. So now I can zoom out a bit and grab my A, bring it down here so it's just next to the H. And I'm going to now start using the rotate handle. That's this little blue, uh, green, um, little handle up here. So if I move my cursor over it, you'll see that it turns to a little rotation arrow. And I'll rotate it until I've got a very similar thing as before, where the two, uh, two blue dots are going to in intersect with that circle. Now I'm going to have to move it because it's obviously overlapping the H, which moves my dots off. So I'll just go back and again move that around and move. Now I think you've pretty much got the idea of what I'm going to be doing now. So I shall just keep going and try and cover anything off as I go. So again, just working carefully as I go zooming in as much as I need to to see what I'm doing. If it gets complicated and there's lots of extra bits of your letters and things, don't panic, just zoom right in so you can see what you're doing and then zoom out again. Uh, there we go, well, maybe one more and I shall scroll back up, grab my next P, P please Bob. That's a classic joke in the history of jokes, isn't it? Uh, so, move that over a bit. Now I'm trying to keep the spacing um, appropriate between the letters as well. Sometimes it will look a bit funky because of the way the characters are created, but again use that bounding box to help you figure out where the characters would have overlapped before. Uh, so this one needs to rotate a little bit more. Move it down, there we go. Uh, maybe back a little bit. Okay. Grab my uh, my Y. And this time, if I hold down my shift key while I'm using the 
mouse button to rotate that letter. It goes in increments of 45 degrees, so I now know that this is at 90 degrees perfectly. So again, just using that bounding box. Now because it's not going to be 90 degrees perfectly, I am just going to rotate that just a little bit and move it down until those blue dots again are touching the circle. So if I zoom back out to the full matte size, you can see now how that's progressing. Now in some instances it might not look um, appropriate when you've got the circle in place. So if you take that away, actually it starts looking like it's working. Sometimes working with script um, works better because the flow of the letters helps. So I'll do another one just now so you can see that process one more time. And I will use a script case this time. Uppercase and lowercase, a mix of those obviously is good as well. Uh, so I want to start with my circle. And this time, as I mentioned, I'm going to use a script type font. I think I will go for, hmm, should it be this one or this one? If you're using the um, text importer, by the way, the uh, text converter software, obviously when you bring your letters in, they're already separated and divided, so you don't need to do that process again, but you can obviously then um, space them out around the circle. So I'm going to, oops, I need to change the text first. Uh, what should we do this time? Let's do, let's do all lowercase, and we'll do anniversary. Okay, click on the select tool, edit, process, overlap, divide. Now, one thing to point out here, when you divide an I, the, the tittle and the main body of the character are usually separated. So we'll just select both of those, right click and group. So now they're all one, so that when I come back to grab this, I don't go and drag that off without its dot. So let's start with the A. And I'll move it down there, view, fit to selection. And again, it's a bit too far in, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. And I'm gonna, I think I'll align it first so that I can make sure it's in place. So that's edit and center. There we go. Now if I click the A, that's fine. I might just nudge it down with the arrow keys on my keyboard. They're another option. Now you can see that actually the A here, the base of the A here and here are slightly, they're not um, perfectly horizontal. So you will get some overlap there. You've just got to make that consistent with the other letters, if you see what I mean. Right, so I need the next letter, which is N, and I will also grab the other N while I'm here, so it's within reach. So I'll bring that down, I'll rotate that round. Now this time I'm going to try and overlap the letters so that I can weld them together. So you can see there, because that was the part connecting with the circle, I'm trying to make this part connect with the circle. And as I had an overlap there with the A, I'm not worried about the overlap here with the N. Just a tiny bit of rotation just to make that make sense. Okay, on to the next one. Now as you may have noticed, this isn't um, evenly spacing the letters out around the circle. This is just giving me a circle path to work with. I am going to be doing a video on another method where you can work out all of the angles you need to use in order to create evenly spaced lettering. But for now I just wanted to give you a nice simple one that you could take your time over, make sure it's all perfect and then save so that you can use it again in the future. Okay, there we go. Right, let's grab that I and the V. I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse to move around sometimes by the way, just in case you think the screen's magically moving. Oops, so the I to move around a bit. I think that's fine. Anniversary, the V comes next. Now 
Now this one I need to move this over so that it, it connects with that so that when it welds, welds together. So again I'm still using those two block, blue dots to align that letter to the circle and just making sure in this case that it overlaps. So I need my next letters now. I'm going to move all of these down actually I think and then I can get to them. So it was the E next. Let's move that guy around. Get him over. Now you see the two blue dots, although it kind of looks overlapped here, the two blue dots are way out. That kind of that will be wrong to my up to my eye. There we go, that's much better. Okay, now it's the R. Circular text, by the way, I think is becoming quite popular because you can put it around circular apertures and you can do um, designs for t-shirts where there's a motif and you've got something in the middle that you want to frame with text. Now you see the S would be very difficult to find out how it would align if I wasn't using some other visual reference. The difficulty with the S for me is that it's going to be too close to the R when I overlap it. So I'm going to leave some space and I will find another way to connect it in just a second. I think if I, if I move that R out a bit. Because then the spacing won't look too much out of place here like so. Now what I'm going to do is actually enter by double clicking um, the R, I'm going to enter the node editing mode so I can grab this one, hold down my shift key and click on this one and then drag those two over a bit so they overlap the E and then oops, double click again to get back in, select this node, shift and click to grab this one and then we're going to drag that over a little bit and then I'll deselect this one and just select this one by clicking on it and then I will drag that over a bit as well so that that kind of goes onto the S. So hopefully now when that welds it will sort of flow that way. Right, let's get the A and that's going to join to the S there. Almost there with the blue dots. Yep. Okay, we've got another R. Do you remember, oh, by the way, do you remember back at the beginning where that overlapped a little bit and that a bit more? I'm still keeping that consistency when I've got the two base points. and then there should be just the Y to go. Now this one again would present us with some problems because this part obviously would go be below the baseline. So in this instance I'm going to roughly gauge it with these like that and then I'll move it down so that the appropriate part touches the line. I think when I weld this, I'll come back and edit that bit so that it's a bit cleaner as well. In fact, actually, if I just enter that now, I can move that up so that it goes towards that line. And that there so that it hits there. Mm, 
might still need a little bit of editing so I'll come back and sort that out in a bit I'll just undo those for now uh, right let's zoom back out in fact let's press A on our keyboard to select everything and then view fit to selection and we can now see that we've got um, sort of circular text so again I'll select everything this time I am going to group it and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so I can get a better idea or actually I'll move it back around so I can get a better idea of how it's going to look on the finished thing and then I'll ungroup it and I think that's going to work quite well What I'm not happy with is this eye. It doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to take some artistic license with this. Okay, so I've made a couple of adjustments and actually I now much prefer the way that eye sits. You might have to take a few um, creative licenses to the text to make sure that it fits or welds or whatever. So I'm now going to remove the actual circle itself and I'm going to weld these together. That's now my word. I am going to uh, oh actually I said I was going to edit this part didn't I so double click to enter the node editing mode and what should we do to get rid of I think I'll remove that point there and that point there and then this point here maybe even actually if I get rid of that it'll get rid of the bump and same for this so let's have a look at that view fit to selection much cleaner much nicer and that worked quite well here as well for that R and the S and I've still got the space in between so that looks good uh, yeah I think I think that's all right uh, so let's just rotate it a little bit so now that I can see where my letters are going to fit you see how the A is here and the Y is here I'm going to zoom out just a little bit more and I can rotate so that they're both about the same distance from that line so now oh, I'll tell you what I should have done I should have grouped it with the titular from the eye telling you to do it earlier and I didn't whoopsie um, okay so let's bring that back up here and there okay so there we go that's really just one way of doing text on a circular path as I said in the coming weeks I'm going to do another video that will show you how to do this using specific degrees of rotation so that you can evenly space it out around the outer edge of that circle in the meantime I hope you've enjoyed this video and you get some use out of it give it a go give it some practice don't lose patience, just go through it step by step and you will have this nailed in no time. Many thanks for watching, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and of course don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified of future videos from me 